probably the easiest unit unit or the easiest test you guys are going to have. Okay. I've had some easy tests. I showed it to uh, one of my other teachers. He's like, oh my gosh, this is an easy test. Well, so, yeah. So, here's the thing. Today we're going to talk about weathering. We're going to talk about two types of weathering and different process, the different processes. And then we're going to talk about how we see that today. So, here we go. Weathering. Mechanical weather. Well, mechanical weathering is the breaking of rocks. If you take this rock and break it into little mini pieces, it's been weathered. It's been mechanically weathered, physically weathered. It is physically broken. Okay? If you physically break it, what's left over? Rock. The same rocks. Nothing has changed except the shape of the rocks. Okay. Right? That's mechanical weathering. So they all don't what if like a tree breaks the time it <laughs> Is a tree a rock? Must get oh, no. <laughs> Okay. So this is mechanical weather. Now, how does this happen? Well, this is called frost wedging. Frost wedging should be something you guys are all super familiar with. But you're gonna like, oh my gosh, that's frost wedging? That's so cool, I already know that. Here's why. You go out into the street. It's cold outside, right? It's been freezing and wet and rainy for the last two or three days, right? Yeah. Like last week it was all rainy when we were here trying to leave school to go to the Thanksgiving break. Well, everyone was worried that that rain would turn to ice, ice and snow. It did. It did. It turned into okay. snow. Everywhere else except here. Yeah, everywhere else except here. That's how it always is. Sure. I guess. Thank you. If, um,. All that rain on the road. Well, there's cracks in the road from all those big semi trucks. And all the cars and all the, you know, the roads got cracks in it. Water gets into the cracks. Now, there's something cool about water. Water is not compressible. You cannot squeeze water. You can squeeze air. You can squeeze rocks. You can squeeze many different things. Donnell, take notes. But you cannot squeeze water. Yeah, that's probably. I'm at a disadvantage. Yeah, you didn't show up prepared. Come on. When water freezes, the fact that it's not squeezable means that it's going to overpower anything around it. So that water, when water freezes, what happens Sorry. to it? Does it expand or contract? It expands. It expands. You guys ever put a soda can in the freezer thinking I'm just going to get this cold? Oh, yeah. yeah. And then it like bulges out. Yeah. Okay. Water does the same thing to rocks. So if you have the roadway, water has been raining, 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 raining. At night, that the temperature drops. It freezes. Well, all those waters, are in, all that water is in the crack. What happens to the water? It expands as it forms ice, and it starts to bulge and pry apart the rock a little bit, and that makes the crack a little bit bigger. It makes the crack a little bit bigger. Well, <laughs> during the next day, the sun comes out, it warms up, the temperature comes above freezing, all that water in, the, in that crack that just made the crack bigger melts a little bit. As that water melts, it goes a little bit further down the crack. It made a bigger opening. It goes in the crack. Rains a little bit more, get a little bit more water. It freezes at night. That crack starts to get a little bit bigger because the water starts to expand a little bit. And over time, this process will take a rock with just some slight cracks in it and start shearing slabs of the rock off. This is called frost wedging. On the road, we know this as a pothole. Oh, that's how pothole. This is that's exactly how potholes form. But they're formed by trying. On roads. Okay. This is mechanical weathering. Freezing water, thawing water, freezing water, thawing water, freezing water, thawing water, you get this. Yes, I do. Like, you know, steel, like, if it has a little cracks in it, like, I know some types of them, but, like, you know when it gets really cold, still. Okay. Like, if you were in Antarctica, what would happen? Would it be, like, wiggle and be some cracks? Or would you like, I'm not sure. I'm not talking about steel, I'm talking about rocks. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, steel's more likely to rust away than it is to be physically broken. It's much stronger. Okay? Uh, so this is frost wedging. Do you guys have any questions about frost wedging? Nope. Okay. Is there heat wedging? There is sheeting. There's sheeting. Let's talk about exfoliation. Anyone in here cosmetology? Yeah. Exfoliation. <laughs> I was like, okay. no way. Uh, cosmetology, we're always talking about exfoliating and trying to bring out the inner inner stud, inner beauty, getting rid of the dead skin cells in the top. Well, this mountain is trying to go for its inner beauty. Okay, this is half dome. I believe this is half dome. This is a giant granite intrusion. It has been lifted up and exposed. Is granite is an intrusive coarse grain igneous rock. Granite, intrusive coarse grain igneous rock. Where did it form? Igneous rock? Uh, magma. Oh. It's a magma, okay. Where do magmas cool? Near volcanoes. What? What? This is an intrusive igneous rock. Oh, in, intrusive. In, in, Where did inside, it cool? Inside, inside, inside the earth. Is there more pressure at the surface or inside? Inside. 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 So this form at pressure. As it's been lifted to the surface over time, it's taken the pressure off, and now it's starting to break in these sheets. As it, it's expanding outward, the pressure's taken off, it's coming to the surface, it's, it's sheeting off. It's exfoliating. Okay, so you get these slabs of rock. You can even see the different layers in the slabs as they're starting to break off. Okay, that's exfoliation, physical weathering. The rock is slowly breaking down into little pieces of the same kind of rock. Physical weathering. Okay, questions, comments, concerns? Cries of outrage? Cries of outrage. What was that last one? Cries of outrage. Ah, that's it. I don't believe you. Okay, <laughs> next one. Root wedging. Now, I had a student first period, he asked, he's like, Mr. Corey, are those trees growing on that mountain? Yes. Is that grass? Yeah. <laughs> trees. These are trees growing on a rock. Can that happen? Yes. Absolutely it can happen. It happens all the time. And these trees start out as these little saplings, and they, they send their roots into the cracks of rocks looking for nutrients, because there's not a lot of good soil for them to grow. Well, as these trees start to grow, and they're pulling the nutrients from the rock, as the rock is broken down, they grow bigger. The hole does not get bigger by itself. The tree is starting to pry it apart. As the tree pries it apart, you can call it root pry, or the root wedges in there. So you can hear, here we see this rock layer is not naturally bent, but the rock, the tree, is bending it. So if you guys ever walk on a sidewalk and, and trip because the root has, the roots of trees have bulged up and, and destroyed sidewalks? Okay, that happens all the time. Go down to DC, you'll see that all the time. Go down to Alexandria or Old Town or Middleburg or any of these places, you'll see this. Anywhere you have old trees next to sidewalks, they destroy sidewalks. Why don't they just take away the old trees? Or move the sidewalk? That's a good question. Some people like old trees. Old trees are pretty nice. Still have them down um, we had a tree. We had a tree in our backyard that was about to damage the, the foundation of the house because of its roots. We had to cut the tree down because I like the house more than the tree. So we cut the tree down. That's my stuff. It's nature there. Okay. Do you guys have any questions on root wedging? No, sir. What kind of weathering is this? Physical or chemical? Physical. Physical. Physical weathering. They haven't okay. added the chemical yet, so. <laughs> no, we haven't. Okay. Now, this is abrasion. All right, this is uh, fun story time, Mr. Court. All right. Abrasion is the concept that as rocks bang into other things, the edges get smooth. <laughs> they yeah. knock off all the sharp edges. Anyone in here skateboard or bicycle? Never heard of the thing. Okay. <laughs> Anyone ever been on a skateboard or a bicycle? Yes. Turn up. Tatiana, you have never been on a bicycle in your whole life. I have. Okay. 
Turn up. Skateboard is like. Has anyone ever fallen off said skateboard or bicycle? Okay. When you fall off these things and your skin is exposed, it's called an abrasion. Very good. Okay. It's called an abrasion. Your skin gets all scraped up. One of the first times I got on my horse and I'm riding him around the arena. <laughs> you say that in a second. I'm going around. Another horse kicked the stall, right? Uh, kicked the wall. So there's a wall here. I'm here. Horse here. My horse wall between us. Horse kicked the wall, knowing I was going by. Like, ha ha ha! Watch this guy. <laughs> my horse decided to do something intelligent. So here's my horse. Intelligent. Here's the ground. My horse ducked, turned, and ran. It's called ducking and spinning. The problem was, as the horse ducked and spun, I did not. So the horse left and left me there in the air, and I did like one of those, you know, those cartoons where you see the ground, like, ah, and I hit. I got an abrasion on my elbow where I hit the ground that lasted for weeks before it healed. Oh, I think Is that the reason why you have tattoos? What? Guys, focus. Okay. This is abrasion. Where the corners and edges of rocks are broken off by physically hitting other rocks. This can happen in a... You're still walking around the room. He just keeps getting up. Keep interrupting the class, dude. You have to sit by your trash can. <laughs> okay. This can either happen with wind, or with water. I'm sure there's other ways it can happen, but the ones I'm giving you now, wind and water. You guys ever watch those Wile E. Coyote car cartoons? Yes. Yeah. Where you have those, like, the giant rocks that are, like, nestled on a point? Yeah. Okay. They have been weathered with abrasion. So here you have the wind has taken sand and taken sand and blown sand continually, and here you see a rock with a whole bunch of smooth edges. And the rock was a little bit stronger right here than it was in the middle, so the middle rock is gone, and this rock is still here. Eventually, this whole thing will go away through weathering, but it hasn't yet. So this is through abrasion, or you also get, this is a, a beach, a pebble beach on maybe a lake, and as the water comes up, yeah. it's taking the rocks, and the rocks are bashing into each other and bashing into each other as the, the waves come in and out. And as that happens, it knocks off the edges of all the rocks and you get these nice smooth pebbles. This happens in rivers and lakes and beaches and lakes. Okay. So my fun story. I have a great uncle, great uncle Charlie, uh, was driving through the desert of Arizona going toward California. And they closed the freeway because there was a sandstorm. Now, this was in the 50s, so a long time ago. They closed the freeway because it was in this, uh, uh, just a giant sandstorm. And he just happened to be one of those cars that made it past the close before it was closed. So no one knew he was out there. And he didn't know the freeway was, was closed behind him. So the comment he made to his family was, man, there wasn't a lot of people on the road. Yeah, the freeway was closed. So he's driving through the sandstorm. Now, a sandstorm, literally, all the sand is like sometimes up to hurricane force winds whipping around in circles, and he's driving through it like a blizzard of sand, trying to get to his destination. He said, Man, it was slow going. I barely made it. The engine was really struggling. He gets to California, opens the hood, and like buckets of sand are coming out of the, the engine compartment because there's just sand everywhere. Walks around and sees the side of his, his van. Scratched up. No, nope. smooth, polished metal. Did it? It was shiny metal. All the paint was gone. It was completely taken down to bare metal. Why? Because it's like sandpaper. Because of abrasion. It was an abrasive. The sand polished all the edges off the side of the truck. Did it look brand new? So is that how you like get the shiny stuff? You just put in the sand. Well, if, if I want to take off rust and I'm doing 
restoring my, my car or my horse trailer or whatever I'm working on and I want to get rid of rust, you can either cut out the rust or you can sand the rust. Well, and if I use a sand blaster, I'm literally blowing sand with pressure at whatever spot. That's how they take paint off things uh, in industrial settings. Okay, that's abrasion. Do you guys have any questions on abrasion? No, sir. Okay. All right, that was all physical weathering. Now we're going to talk about chemical weathering. Chemical. 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 Um, chemical weathering. Well, this is when the rock is truly transformed. Right? It's no longer the same type of rock. It's now a different rock or a different compound or a different something. It's been chemically changed, not physically changed, chemically changed. So if I asked you a question on the test, what happens to a rock to chemically change it? You would say? A completely different rock. Completely different rock. Okay, that's what's left over after chemical change, a completely different rock. There are a couple different processes we're going to talk about. First process we're going to talk about is this one, oxidation. Then we're going to talk, actually we're talking about something in the middle that's not up here. And then we're going to talk about this one. But this, this is kind of cool. Here's an old train car. What's wrong with it? It's rusting. What is it made of? Steel. Probably steel. Steel is an iron alloy. Iron likes to rust. Iron rich minerals rust. They combine with the oxygen in the air, usually with water, and they oxidize. That's the chemical transformation. They rust. Okay? This is really cool. This tombstone was placed in 18... This granite, granite gravestone placed in 1868 shows little evidence of chemical weathering. I can still read the name. This is Sweat. Peter Sweat lived from 1801 to 1868. Okay, he was 67 years old when he died. Okay, over here, uh, I can't read that. Why can't I read that? Well, this is ins inscription date, 1872. This is actually younger than this. On this marble gravestone, marble, marble, marble. Hmm, I wonder what marble's made of. Marble. marble gravestone is nearly illegible due to chemical weathering. So here we can tell that some rocks are more easily weathered chemically than others. Okay. Okay, we're going to figure this out. Let's figure this out. The first thing is oxidation. And I here I, I got a picture of rocks that have oxidized. Do you realize that it's not just cars that rust? You can actually rust a rock? No. Ah. What has to be present? What kind of minerals do you think would be present in a iron. rock? Ah, iron minerals. Okay, if it's iron that rusts in a car, then it's iron that's going to rust in a rock. Say it. Not all cars use ceramic brakes, but that's. I don't know. I'm not, I love cars, but I'm not that intelligent about them to answer your question. Um, I know that the, the brake drums will rust, they'll oxidize. Your brake uh, rotor will oxidize and rust. Uh, you're talking about the pads, I'm not sure about the pads. I'm writing it now. That's probably more due to how it grips it, something like that. Okay. Um, oxidation. So here we have a rock that's rusted. This rock, if it's got this red patina of rust on it, what mineral must be present in the rock? Iron-rich minerals. Probably hematite. It's actually what it turns into. Um, do you guys all understand rust? Yeah. Like this is pretty common, right? You guys all know that cars rust and then they disappear because they've rusted so much. You've all seen the clunkers on the road, like, oh my gosh, how is that bumper even held on? Duct tape. Yeah, usually. I've seen that. Or string. Mighty Okay, that's oxidation. It's not only iron stuff that oxidizes, but iron's the big one. So oxidation is the process where stuff reacts with oxygen. What color is the Statue of Liberty? 
Green. It didn't used to be copper, it is yeah. copper. The copper oxidized, and now it's green. What? Really? So what did it used to look like? It used to be the color of a penny. Huh? Now, how long it took to turn green, I'm not sure I wasn't there, but I mean, it's made of copper. So, copper isn't green until it oxidizes. What about the whole Eiffel Tower? What about that? I have no idea about the Eiffel Tower. Uh, okay, this is silicate chemical weathering. Now, I'm combining a whole lot of things into one here. I'll tell you, stay awake, man. Back table, stay awake. Pile downs. Ooh, wake up, man. Come on. Um, the minerals and silicate rocks can weather chemically. This is important for the Snickers activity. I would pay attention. Okay, quartz grains do not weather very well. It's very hard to weather quartz. They are very strong, they're very resilient, and they last pretty much forever unless you melt them or metamorphose them. They do not like to be chemically weathered. So you can break them, but you have a very hard time chemically weathering them. Is that about quartz? Quartz. Quartz, right here. Quartz. It's talking about the crystal looking. What is the residual product? Quartz. Quartz does not weather very well. What's the materials here? Silica. Um, but the minerals within one. Now, quartz is the mineral itself. So let's say you take a granite. Granite has a lot of quartz, feldspar, and amphibole. A little bit of amphibole, a whole lot of feldspar, a little bit of quartz. Okay? As that granite is exposed over time to the elements, rain and things, the feldspar reacts with water. Water reacts with feldspar. And that feldspar turns to clay. It's a chemical process. I'm not going to get much into the chemical process, but know that feldspar can turn to clay. The amphibole can also turn to clay, limonite, hematite, some other things. And all of them breaks down very quickly as well. Okay, so here we have like the feldspars and the other minerals at different rates turn to different things with reactions with water. But what does quartz do? Quartz doesn't turn to quartz, it just doesn't change. It just doesn't change. Okay, if you want to know what kind of mi mineral do you find at the beach, the beach is a long way up from the mountain. It's been a long time since it started to be weathered. So what's left over the further you get from the mountain? Quartz. Quartz, because the feldspar turned to clay, the amphibole, the olivines all turned to all this other stuff. So what's left over? Quartz. Quartz. So what is beach sand made of, typically? Quartz. Quartz. Okay, did you guys get that? Yes. Wait. Okay, I know Melanie gets that. How about Kyle Downs? Does Kyle Downs get that? <laughs> She's just not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa. You interrupted my dream of awesomeness. Okay. Quit dreaming about awesomeness and wake up to the boring science that we're all awesome. else learning about. Okay. This is all about how Sorry. silicate rocks weather. Hey, silicate rocks, what percentage of the crust is that? Pull back from prior knowledge, what we learned in previous units. 90% of the rocks in the crust are silicates. Okay, last slide. This one was sick of sleep. I can get the first two. Okay. Water, carbonic acid, acid rain. Have to see Mr. Dunham. Okay. Um, water combines with carbon dioxide, creating carbonic acid. This is why soda kills your teeth. This acidic water dissolves carbonate rocks. If you don't get this slide here and what I'm talking about here, you're in trouble. You've really got to understand this. Okay? Sammy. Is that watch? Sammy. Make sure you understand this, man. I don't want to hear complaints about why you did bad on the test. Water combines with carbon dioxide, creating carbonic acid. Well, we know there's water in the atmosphere, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Why do people put lotion on in the winter? Because they're uh, they dry. Dry. Your skin dries out. What causes your skin to dry out? Dry air. Dry air. Not as much water in the air when the air is cold. So we have H2O is water. Okay. What are you breathing out? Uh, uh, oxygen. Carbon. Oxygen. Carbon. carbon dioxide. dioxide. Okay. So there is also carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Water in the form of water vapor and liquid water clouds in the atmosphere combined with the carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere. This creates a fun chemical. So if we balance our equation well, we should get H2CO3. Yeah. This is what? A form of carbonic acid. Oh wait. Carbon dioxide. Ah, carbonic acid. Woohoo! Now, if you take water and carbon dioxide and mix them, you will get a, it's a very mild acid, but you will get an acid. What is the first ingredient in all soda? Carbonated. Carbonated water. It's carbonated. It's got carbon dioxide in it. Isn't that club soda? Club soda, yeah. So all soda is going to be naturally acidic. This is why soda kills your teeth. Because your teeth are made of calcium-based minerals. You're drinking something that dissolves your teeth. Literally. Okay. Yeah, lemons, pineapples. Oranges. Yeah, those will all rot your teeth. Okay. That doesn't make sense. So don't brush your teeth right after you get your teeth nice and soft from drinking acid. Wait for a little bit before you brush your teeth. Okay. And that saves your nail. Okay. I did not. Um, for example, one time we had this homecoming luau when I was in college. They decided we're not going to do traditional homecoming. We're going to do this luau. And they had so much fresh fruit. It was amazing. I ate so much pineapple that night that literally the inside of my mouth was burning from the acid from all the pineapple I ate. It was amazing. Painful, but delicious at the same time. Okay, so here we have this carbonic acid. Well, this is rain, right here. This is in all of your rain. So, all the rain that falls from the sky is naturally acidic. Do you guys remember that mineral that I dropped the acid on? What did it do? It fizzed up. It fizzed and bubbled. What was that acid doing to the rock? It was killing the acidity. Well, it's, it's, that was, I don't know. It was reacting to the calcium. It was breaking it down chemically. Chemically, it was dissolving the rock. If we take water, combine it with acid, and pour that into the ground, it's going to do something. Well, here we have a statue of George. So George Washington here, 1944, New York City, marble statue. Marble is made with what mineral? I Marble is metamorphosed from what rock? It starts with an L. L? Limestone. Limestone. Limestone is made with what mineral? Calcite. Calcite. Calcite reacts with acid and dissolves away, right? It's a yeah. carbonate. So here we have a carbonate statue of George Washington in 1944. Oh my gosh, what happened to his face? This is a present day picture of George Washington's face, you can see that, you can tell that this side of his face experienced probably more water exposure, maybe it's always raining in this direction in New York City, but here we have his face and maybe his, his tie, a lot of the distinction is being weathered away. <laughs> so if we go back here, this is made of granite, it does not weather away to acid rain as much as a marble tombstone will. So over the course of over, uh, let's see, 1868 to present, almost 80 years, okay, something like that. This one's barely changed. This one is already being dissolved away. So we should make our statues in granite yeah. instead of marble. If you want them to last longer, yes. Okay. I'll write a petition. Okay. Why is this so important? If you have the topography of your area is limestone, let's say the valley in Ridge Province, 
the valley in Ridge Province has lots of limestone in the valleys. We take all the water that comes from the sky that is slightly acidic and pour it over the limestone. What's going to happen? It's going to bubble. It's going to dissolve. And you're going to end up with holes in the ground. Those holes in the ground are called mud holes. Mud holes. Mud holes. Underground. Oh. Holes <laughs> underground that you can access. Caves. Thank you. Oh. Caves. <laughs> so later in the class, this unit, this unit we're going to talk about karst topography or the topography of caves. And on the test, I'm going to ask you a question that goes along the lines of, how do caves form? Mm. You're going to say, water combines with carbon dioxide. It creates acid. Acid rain gets into limestone. Limestone is carbonate. It dissolves. You have a cave. That's it. Right. And you get the question right. But most people don't get the question right because you weren't taking them. So all caves are limestone? No. Not all caves are limestone, but the vast majority of them are made of a carbonate type of a rock. You do have like cool like lava tube caves, but for the most part, for the vast, vast majority of the time, you have carbonate rocks like dull stone or limestone. That's caves. Do you have any notes for universal things? Okay, and that's all I have for you right now. Okay, wow, you guys are doing really good. Um, I don't want to start erosion yet, because um, I haven't started it with anyone else. So we're going to keep everyone on track. Uh, next class, we're going to talk about erosion for you guys, how to do a way to study, because a lot of what your problem is, is you're not studying. Okay. This is called graphic or a uh, concept map or graphic organizer. This is just one way. This is the way I do it. There's many ways to do this. What are we talking about today? Uh, we're talking about fresh water resources. What are the two types of weather we talked about? We talked about chemical and mechanics. <laughs> Okay. How does mechanical weathering work? Physical. 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 If there's a physical breakage of the rock, so the rock breaks. What's left over after the rock breaks? Rock. Just the same rock. Same rock. Same rock. Isn't that like a same rock in pieces. I'm not even trying to write down. Okay, what happens in chemical rocks? Completely new rock. New rock. It's a transformation. New rock, new compounds. It's dissolved away. Okay. Okay, what are some types of mechanical? Uh, oh, frost wedging. Frost wedging. And uh, root wedging. And, uh, <laughs> oh, it's fully abrasion. Abrase. What is that? Shaving or smoothing? Okay, so I'm going to try to write this down in a way that I understand it better because I'm trying to study from this chart. So, okay, I know that mechanical weathering is the physical breakage of rock. Frost wedging, oh yeah, but that's when things freeze and then thaw and then freeze again. Okay, and then there's exfoliation. That's when rocks. Pressure. I'm going to say shed layers. Layers shed. Beautiful. Okay, because this is a way to help me understand the term that I need to know. Another one, I, you guys root wedging. call them out. Okay. Yeah, root wedging. Trees. 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 I could say grow and crack. What? <laughs> they stay after the industry to Cracks. Okay. Okay. Uh, there was one more. What was the last one? Abrasion. 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 That's why you don't have to do that. Rocks are eating into each other. How do you watch it? Okay. 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 What was the last one? I don't want to, man. You probably watch it. Like, that's fortunate. Okay. I don't want to. 
the other one. Why the coyotes? No, I've never So I'm going to write down the problem? things that help me so remember that. I remember freestyle. Oh, that's cross wedging. Oh, abrasion. That's the wily coyote landscape. Okay, what's going on with the chemical? Okay. Hush, hush, hush. Oxidation. Oxidation. Oh, these hours. No. Just for that. What is really going on with oxidation? Rust. Rust. Good. Sounds like you would do that. Then you put like iron. That's however you remember it best. So what after oxidation? Um, silicate, chemical, weathering. So quartz, I think. Silicate, chemical, weathering, things break down into clays. Okay. Uh, what? What's after that? Water slash carbonate. Oh, the biggest one out there. Acid rain. Like caves. You did it. Okay, caves. We're gonna remember that. Okay. So this would be a graphic organizer for simply just weathering. It's not weathering erosion. It's just weathering. So this would be a way to kind of physically see the categories and what's going on. If you, for the test, make your own version of one of these, can't use mine. I did like the most basic one possible. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Okay. If you make one of these for the whole unit, I will give you an extra credit point. Okay.